There's a big problem in the HVAC industry, and that is a lot of technicians in our industry that are still doing things by rule of thumbs, calculations that we've seen over the years. And in today's video, I want to cover a quick formula that folks can use to make sure a return duct is sized correctly using a ductulator. Put a link down in the description of this video for a couple different ductulators that are good in different ways. But I think if you follow this video, you'll be able to size a return duct better than I've seen it explained in other videos and other locations where I've seen folks try to talk about how to size those returns. I do want to say thank you to JC for taking the time out to record this video with me. So let's get to it. A quick, simple formula that you can use to size a return on your next ductwork installation. So the most important thing when you go to design a duct is there's a calculation out there called TSS times 100 divided by the total effective length. Total system static is everything that you have left over after you've taken into account everything that's attached to your furnace or your air handler, whether that be a plenum, a return duct, a grill, a boot, everything. That's all of the resistance. And each one of those things have what's called a total effective length. And that is basically the same effective length if this fitting was a straight piece of pipe. So an elbow is, say, worth 25 feet of straight pipe. Or a Y is worth, you know, 30 feet of straight pipe. Everything out there that we use as a duct fitting has a total effective length number associated with it. Boots, grills, those can be a little bit different, but they have an effective length. Basically, TSS times 100 divided by the total effective length. So if you have a duct itself, a straight piece of pipe, that's 25 feet. So you've got 25 feet of duct, and it has a fitting, like a tap, that's worth 5 feet. And then you have a elbow that's worth another 25 feet and then you have a boot that's worth 15 feet that is your entire duck run okay so that's 70 feet in this case you would take your tss times 100 so your total system static now all of us are told two numbers 0 0.05 for return and 0 0.1 for supply those numbers are okay if that's the amount of system static you have left over after you've added all of the things like your evaporator coil, your furnace, your heat strips, whatever it is that's causing resistance to your total amount of statics. But generally, I try to land at 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. And I like 0 0.05 on returns because it's really quiet. 0 0.05 times 100 is always going to be 5. So you take five and you divide that by 70 which gets you at 0 0.071 so now you're going to design your return air duct at 0 0.071 instead of 0 0.05 because all ductulators are based on 100 feet of linear pipe length and often you don't always have a full 100 feet on a return and sometimes not even on supplies if i could just interject here just in a uh, uh, to summarize, you're basically saying to measure the length of the return duct because we're going to do supply duct in a separate video coming up. If if you found this video, we're going to do a separate video on this. Measure the length of the return. That's your total effective length, right? Well, so no, so you're going to add up your fittings. Each fitting that you have has an equivalent length. So if you look on the back of a ductulator, you will see all these fittings and numbers associated with them. And that is the linear length. If that was just a straight piece of pipe, it is equal to this amount of feet. That's total effective length. Let's say I've got a return on a three ton system and I'm going to have two nineties on that. So I'm going to come off the, the system with a plenum. Okay. And then, and then let's say the, duct that came off the plenum is 20 feet long and then the duct between the two 90s is another 20 feet long so you've got 40 feet of duct 
40 feet of duct. Yep. 40 feet of duct. Two 90s. Two 90s. Okay. So there were 25 feet. So that's 50 feet. And then you have your tap. So you have two, you have two taps, one for your return box, and then one at your return at your furnace or another box. And both of those are going to be worth about 10 feet or 15 feet each. It depends on the shape. And that's why each one of those duct fittings has a shape associated with them. So we're just going to say both of those together are another 25 feet. So now this duct is 115 feet. So you got 40 feet of duct, 25 feet for the taps. What was the 90s again? Uh, they're 20, 25 feet each. That's 50. So, so 50 so 40 plus 25 plus 50, right? Where there's nothing else we need to add in there? No, because no. you, you've got your duct, you've got your duct, your fittings, and then your elbows. 0. 0.05 times 100 is always going to be 5. Take your 5, divide that by 115, and tell me what that number is. Now, where did you get the 0.05? Is that the same rule of thumb 0. 0.05 that we've always heard and used? That's the same rule of thumb that we've always used, yes. Okay. All right. And is there times when we would maybe want to adjust that? There is times that we would want to adjust that. So this, I'm basing this on a furnace. We're using 0 0.05 because most furnaces, that's the static pressure that we would want to use. Is that right? Is that fair to say? On the return, yes. Okay. 0 0.05 times 100 divided by that 115 that we just came up with. Yeah. Now, what number do you get? Five divided by 115, point zero four three, and then a bunch of numbers after that. Right. So now you're going to design that return at point zero four. Got it. Got it. Move your uh, duculator to 1200 CFM at point zero four. It says that our return duct, need, if it's going to be round, needs to be 18 inches. Right. 18 inches round, and then I'll show down here at the bottom if it's square, you know, there's some numbers there that you would match up. So, for example, if I knew my square duct was going to be 20 inches, it would be 20 by, say, 16. Right. So, and it's also important to note that the duculator that you have there is only for metal duct. Ah. So, if that was a flex duculator, it would even be different. And the 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 dimensions on that are without liner on the square duct so it would even be bigger because you have to account for your liner if you use one inch or two inch liner so that that makes your duct even bigger so we're going to do more videos on this coming up I, I, at the end of the day though if if a, a technician sees this video and they 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 basically at the end of the day they need to take that formula which is your total system static TSS, TSS multiply that by a hundred and that hundred is always the same because of the it, because duculators are, are set up that way and then you're going to divide whatever that number is by the total length of your ductwork including fittings so, and other things that can add to right so yeah, total effective length total effective length got it elbows transitions taps uh, boots, um, even like, even if you run a flex duct across a roof or a, across the ceiling and you've got a dip everywhere, there's a joist. Each one of those has a, has a, uh, has a cost in effective law. That's really the basics of designing a duct and supply or return. You change the calculation, but really basically sizing a single duct that's how it's done. I'll put a link down in the description of this video for this duculator. If you want to purchase that and maybe a couple other options in case you want to take a look at that, we're going to do more videos on sizing supply ducts. We're going to do another video on a rule of thumb chart that is used way too much in our industry. And JC is going to break down why that chart is bad and some of the instances on how it ends up being the homeowner that ends up paying the price here. So that's it for sizing the ductwork. If you happen to catch this video and you want 
more services from JC where he can actually do proper load calculations and ductwork sizing for you. If you're in our trade and you need a load calculation performed, or if you're a homeowner that happened to catch this and you need that load calculation, I'll put a link down in the description of this video where you can get that done as well. We're going to do more videos like this not just the sizing of the ductwork, but the ins and outs of how to do things correctly. Let me know your thoughts on that on this video or on any other topic revolving around HVAC down in the comments section. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we had JC on our live show and he talks about the importance of HVAC load calculations. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.